So I guess there's, um, shall we say, a lot to unpack with uh, these two episodes combined into one special. Because, oh my god. Yeah. And also, nice of, nice of, of Cartoon Network to not tell us when the next episodes are going to be. I've heard, like, maybe there's going to be new episodes next week or next month. You never know with CW. I mean, CN, but CW was on that. Never mind, I'm, I lost my... <laughs> I lost my analogy. <laughs> uh, it's so much fun to make jokes while still go at battling depression. It's so unhealthy, but so fun. <laughs> anyway, so the story of this episode is that the other Crystal Gems, fearing that Stevani has become too powerful, have trapped her inside of a rocket and blasted her off to a distant planet, but she ends up on a planet called Sakaar, where she has to become a glut. Wait, wait, no. No, that's, that's something else. Sorry. Anyway, so, so the real plot of this episode is... Um, the real plot of this episode is about... Um, Connie and Steven going to see Lars, who has now become a pirate, along with the off-colors, and battling a gem called off, uh, called uh, Emerald. And may I just say that this two-parter is feels like a Marvel story? It feels like something you'd see in Guardians of the Galaxy, or like I was referencing earlier, Planet Hulk. Um, because this feels so much like your typical comic book or action um, storyline you'd see like Marvel or DC, that it, and it feels a bit like Star Wars and Star Trek, you know. It's a nice little, it's a nice little um, adventure story, which we haven't really got because the past few episodes were kind of, I guess you could say, slice of life episodes. So this was a nice little change of pace of going back to action based uh, for a bit because the other five were pretty. The uh, episodes five through ten of season five were pretty much, like I said, slice of life episodes. And not to say they were bad. It's just that. You know, it's nice to get back to, because this is supposedly the final season, it's nice to be like, okay, guys, we, we need to get back to the storyline. Just saying. So, the first half of this episode is very much a, like I said, Star Trek, Star Wars, even a little bit of Guardians of the Galaxy in here, where you see so much of of Stephen and Connie and more and more of the points Devani hanging out with Lars in the off colors. May I just say that I dig Lars's costume? It is so much like Captain Harlock. And Lars has basically gone from yes sir, I'll have her home by ten to your daughter calls me daddy too. Like he just went to that real quick. <laughs> anyway. So uh, where was I going? So anyway, um yeah, it's nice to see Lars in this in the in the off colors more or less. You know, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy of Steven Universe, um, and it's really cool to see Lars has gone from. And I talked about this before in another episode in the past that it's really cool to see that Lars how far Lars has come as a character and seen how far he has gone as a person to these incredible lengths. It's so cool to see him in these incredible lengths, gone from, you know, this scared little teenager who's kind of, a, who's pretty much an asshole because he doesn't know how to deal with feelings, to uh, Captain Harlock. <laughs> and it's really cool. I really dig the off-colors, and I love how they're all, they're really dependent on him, and he's dependent on them. Because, yeah, Lars doesn't have anybody, you know, other than Steven and Connie coming through his head. He has no... All he has are the off-colors, and the off-colors need him. So it's a very... It's very much like a surrogate family, in a way, and that's what Steven's all about, because Steven also has his own surrogate family. Emerald's a cool villain. It's actually kind of interesting, because her design, for some reason or another, her character design reminds me so much of Ryoko from Tenchi Muyo. In fact... For a little bit, I actually thought that was, um, I cannot pronounce her name, but the original voice actress for, um, the original English voice actress for, uh, Ryoko from Tenchi Muyo, the OVA series. I honest to God thought for a little bit that was, um, that was Ryoko's VA for a little bit. But, st but I digress. Yeah, the character design v reminded me so much of Ryoko, especially when you get the body shot of her and you see her costume and her hair, I'm like, oh yeah, Ryoko was definitely a character base for the for this show. I mean, for this character. That was definitely the design idea. And the fact that she's kind of like a pirate, 
adds on to that in a way. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so the second half is where the real meat of this episode is, where, uh, <laughs> where, St where Stevani, after being captured by the gems and shot off to another uh, to the deepest part of space, landing on the planet of Sakaar, she becomes a gladiator to depose the Red King. Wait, no, reverse that. <laughs> you see, it's so easy to compare this to Planet Hulk. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, Stevani, after taking out the guns from Emerald Ship, crash lands on a, on a jungle moon, which looks like something out of Rick and Morty. No, really, I can't be the only one who looked at this planet and went, They're, Rick and Morty are gonna show up at any point, right? <laughs> it's just like, because there's like the, the bug that grows pieces off of it that, you know, after being cut in, after being cut in half, or the, bu uh, the bird that is like a blob. Yeah, it looks like some, they look like characters out of Rick and Morty, <sighs> like aliens you would see in that show. It's very like yeah. I was almost expecting a green portal to go out and go. Y y you guys need a ride. I I got a portal. <sighs> so the um, it's really cool to see Stevani um, surviving out there because you've got Steven's abilities mixed with Co uh, Connie's sword training and her survival instincts. It's really cool to see how far they've come together. And, yeah, Stevani... I know some people have been like, why does Stevani have hair, uh, like, have a beard or stubble? To which I respond with, well, she's half guy, so it's... she's half a person, uh, half a male, so it's going to happen. You know? <laughs> I guess that also ends the uh, whole thing that Stevani is all... When, she, when Steven and Connie fuse, it's all woman. So I guess with the stubble and all that, that just kind of shows that, hey, she's part guy, too. Just just letting you guys know. <laughs> um, but yeah, the um, the big thing in this was we got to see the... the uh, <laughs> we got to see something very interesting that something I don't think any of us expected. I didn't even, like, there were leaks for this episode, but not a lot of leaks, thank God. Thank God, by the way, that, you know, leaks didn't ruin this, um, like they have in the past. So, it was actually really refreshing to actually be surprised by something. What a- in Steven Universe, without it getting leaked. What a fucking shock. Anyway. So, Stevani comes- it goes into, like, this old building that looks very familiar, but, um, she can't put her- it, um, Stevani can't put her finger on it. And they just go, you know, they, Stevani just goes to sleep. While, during that, they have this dream, Stephen and Connie have this dream of more or less a past moment with Pink Diamond. It's also kind of interesting because it starts out with um, Connie's mom and she slowly becomes Yellow Diamond. And can I just say, I can already see the fan art for Connie's mom being... Uh, it dressed as Yellow Diamond because can I, uh, because uh, it suited her. Let's just say that it suited her, and look, <laughs> I'm just saying that we're probably going to see a lot of Yellow Diamond Mahesh Mrs. Maheshwar fan art in the future. You, I, if not now, it's already being drawn and put on the internet by now. I guarantee you that it's going to be a thing very soon in the near in the very near future. Anywho, <clears throat> so the big thing in this is that St that uh, Stevani has this dream where she is Pink Diamond, and we pretty much see a bit of what Pink Diamond was like around the other diamonds, especially Yellow, where we discover that, yeah, she was pretty much, as we all kind of assumed, Yellow Diamond was the youngest. She was kind of like the toddler of, uh, of the uh, Diamond Authority. So it was cool that we get a bit of, I guess we could see a bit of her personality in here, and seeing her, um, inter how she interacted with Yellow, she was kind of like the the uh, the little girl of the group. So it kind of shows of what Yellow Diamond's all about. But on the other hand, there is actually, a, and this is just me being an idiot, as I always am, you know, a pathetic fucking moron. Um, for a brief moment, I was thinking to myself, "Oh my God, are they saying that Stevens not Rose Quartz, but Pink Diamond?" Is that what they're saying? And I was like, oh, wait, no. Steven, can, you know, Steven has the, abil the dream ability. That's his whole thing. Why was... What the fuck were you thinking? 
That was my whole thing. Like, I had to rem remind myself, I was like, oh yeah, he did this with Blue Diamond. But why is he looking into Pink Diamond? Is it just the building? Um, that's what I think, is that it was just the building. But like I said, we get to see a bit more of what Pink Diamond was like, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, come next episode, or next few episodes, we're finally going to figure out the whole thing with Pink Diamond, because it shows that she was, um, she was a youngster. So having Earth was probably her whole thing of, um, you know, this is your little toy box, have fun. And that, and we all know how that played out. So, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how, how this is all going to transpire, um, next episode, whenever we get that, right? <laughs> so, oh my god, because there's so many ways you can interpret that of, you know, Pink Diamond being kind of bratty, but on the other hand, it, sh it kind of shows that how sh young and in inexperienced she was. It really does show that she was young, inexperienced, and it was kind of, you know, that could kind of show why maybe the war happened, was that her inexperience kind of caused this whole war and led to her inevitable demise. It also shows that Yellow um, didn't really like Pink. Maybe it was because, and again, um, it does give cadence to maybe she she's the one who shattered Pink Diamond, but it still leaves up to how does this work with Rose Quartz, you know? It's really hard to tell, honestly. It's really hard to see where this is going to go, and I like that. I like that, you know... You know, one question is answered, and then we out of it we get ten more, ten to twenty more questions, as always. But it does kind of show that Yellow didn't really, you know, appreciate Pink. But on the other hand, maybe you know, since they're all kind of siblings, having the, the young one speaking as as someone who has siblings, the young ones tend to be like that at points. So. Yeah, I'm kind of with Yellow on that one, if that's the case. But on the other hand, maybe she was just like... And maybe Yellow was just like, I'm sick of you. So, like I said, it opens so it opens the door to so many questions. It really does um, put a lot out there to make us kind of question this all the more. And it really sucks that we don't get another ep... That we don't know when we're going to get more episodes. Uh, I've heard, like I've heard uh, I've heard things from like oh it's going to be in two weeks time or something like that. I would not be shocked we don't get another episode we don't get more episodes until like late February or m even as early as like early to mid March because with because let's face it the last time we got episodes they were on for an app on they were on the CN app um, in November and we had to wait until the first week of January to get more episodes you know. It's kind of bullshit, really. But I will say that, it, you know, for a 30-minute special, it didn't feel like everything had to be shortened up. Everything felt like, um, it felt like a well-paced story, a, a well-paced two-part story made as a big 30-minute special. So, thank God for that. Now come, you know, now comes, as um, Tom Petty always says, waiting is the hardest part. Which for that should be the Steven Universe fandom's theme song. Waiting is the hardest part. <laughs> um, let's face it, it is. So anyway, you guys tell me in the comments below. What do you guys think of this two-part episode? Do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it? What do you guys think of the revel the minor revelation we have with Pink Diamond? And just on a whole, what do you guys think of this episode? Just comment below. Let me know. And once again, hope you all enjoyed this. And I will see you guys later.